grateful that I'm going third because um, a lot of, like I had so many notes and it's like, good, Barb's covering that. Excellent, Bob's covering that. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> so um, I'm going to actually open with a quote from Rumi. Um, you know, I have to say, first of all, first and foremost, I'm a physiologist. Um, exercise physiology is my jam. Um, so I work with human bodies. Um, but um, one thing I know, one thing I absolutely know for sure in Oprah's world is our bodies are feelings. Our bodies are emotions. Um, and so people ask if I do trauma-informed yoga. I was like, you know, which body in this room doesn't have trauma? Of course. We all have to have this information of how we deal with really difficult emotions because they're a part of our physiology. Um, and we know that scientifically. Um, but first of all, let me open with Rumi because I think this is beautiful. This being human is a guest house. Every morning is a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, as some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Treat each guest honorably. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, Meet them at the door, <coughs> laughing, and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. And <laughs> I also know the saying about guests and laundry. <laughs> What's the saying? Three days. <laughs> right. Three days, and they start to smell bad. <laughs> right. So um, when Barb first asked me what I was going to be talking about, I was like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really right now, I'm, I'm going deeper into the study of Ayurveda. And we study the doshas and the elements of being. And I was like, you know, I'll just talk about pitta dosha. That'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then a lot of guides came into my life over the last week and I started coming across all these quotes from, well, here's one from the Dalai Lama. Because anger and hostility destroy our peace of mind, it is they that are our real enemy. Anger ruins our health. A compassionate attitude restores it. I followed that thread for a long time because that was a really disturbing quote to me. Um, I didn't like it. I wanted to come here and say that, you know, like Bob said, there's no bad emotion. Um, welcome <laughs> them all. But here's the Dalai Lama you know, <laughs> saying it's an enemy. Um, so I sat with that. And then, like not two days later, there was this from Brene Brown. I don't claim to know what fuel works for best for everyone. You have to say it in a Texas accent. I don't. <laughs> but what I know for sure is that I believe in love's promise and I run on love. That doesn't mean I don't get angry. Anger is a soul-sucking lifetime companion, but it is also a great catalyst for two of the grittiest, truest forms of love, justice and equity. Yeah, she nailed it, didn't she? You know, and that's, I think, what Barb said. And um, so then here's another little voice from the universe I had to welcome in this morning, was that, um, I don't know if anybody listens to NPR early on Saturdays, but my alarm went off at 6. I'm like, oh, I'm not ready to get up yet. So I turn on the radio so I don't, like, completely go back to sleep. And it was um, the TED Talk radio show, and it was all about anger. <laughs> I was like, Maybe I should listen to this. <laughs> and one of the things they talked about, and, and Barb touched on this, who has the right to show anger? Not a black man. Because what do they do if they show they're angry? They get shot. Right? Not a woman, because we get called bitches. Right? So, you know, it's like, Oh, here's another aspect of anger that I really hadn't even begun to think about. So it is a really big topic. Um, 
Another person that I came across, and I'm going to have the, the sheer pleasure of going to a retreat center in Western Mass in a few weeks, and Valerie, Valerie Carr is one of the speakers. Now, she's maybe not somebody that you know, and she's not somebody I really knew before, but she's an attorney. She was living in um, New York City during 9-11, and um, she happens to be from South Asia, ethnically. Um, her family is of the Sikh religion, so Sikh religion, if you don't know, the men wear turbans. Um, and she, but she was born and raised in this country. Her family's been living in the United States for 100 years, but they maintain their, their ethnic um, ties to their religion. Um, and of course, right after 9-11, what are all the images of the people that you see? People with brown skin and wearing turbans, people just like her family. And sure enough, her <coughs> uncle, who had a gas station in Oklahoma, was shot and killed by someone who was fearful of that look of person. Did she have the right to get angry? <laughs> you know, she's an attorney, so she weighed things quite a lot. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, we want to say yes, but could she show that anger? No. Um, you know, the, the person who, who murdered her uncle um, did, did go to jail. It took her 15 years before her, her father and her called him and spoke with him and heard his story. And then they sat with it. And that's where I'm going here. It's like some things we have to sit with and process. But through that process is transformation. So when we think of, in Ayurveda, we think of the doshas. And uh, so Bob introduced some terms. I'm going to introduce some terms. And the word dosha literally means that which spoils. So you can sit with something, but after a while, it gets kind of rotten, like the laundry, like the guests who are maybe staying too long. Um, but there's not anything necessarily wrong with the energy itself. So the three doshas, kapha is the energy of earth and water. So we think of that as our physical manifestation. We have matter, we have mass, we're heavy, but we can also move, right? So muddy, we're muddy beings. The third energy is fire, and that's the second dosha, and that's the power of transformation. That's digestion in our physiological body. We we transform food, right? And we do it in our gut. And I love the, um, the little images that Barb put out. Like, where do you feel anger? Who, who feels it in their gut? Yeah. Yeah, because that's where we burn stuff, right? So anger is generally associated with inflammation, right? We get inflamed when we get angry. We burn stuff. I tend to throw stuff when I'm angry. But sometimes we burn bridges, right? Um, I have to say, <laughs> one time I was, I was a, a young mom, two kids, lots of stuff going on, and I just, I happened to burn things like incidentally a lot until my husband like took away all matches. <laughs> and it wasn't like it wasn't on purpose at all. It's just like I'd light a candle and something next to it would set on fire. I put something in the oven and forgot and something there. And it's just like, he's like, you have to get away from this. It's like sometimes it comes out in insidious ways. We don't always know what we're dealing with. I think it was just overwhelmed. I was inflamed by my life, right? So it comes out of us. Um, so we need fire in our gut to digest food. We need the power of transformation, not just in our gut, but in every cell in our being. We, we transform things, right? So the third dosha is um, air and ether. It's what we call vata dosha. And ether may be a little bit difficult um, concept. Usually you guys know the four elements, but in many Eastern traditions there are five elements. And in Ayurveda we call it ether. And it's the quality of space. So right now my voice is in this space. If you've ever walked into a cathedral, it's a quality of space. 
right? And it's not really the air itself. You can breathe in a cathedral, right? But it, but it may take your breath away, <laughs> right? So there's quality of space. That's what we call ether. So vata tends to um, be more like our consciousness, right? Because that's a quality of thoughtfulness, which can create space. So <clears throat> none are bad. All are good. But what happens when we have too much of one? When we burn too hot? or we get too muddy, when we're too much in our mind. You know, I was talking about the vata person is a person who trips themselves up all the time because they're not grounded enough. So Valerie Carr's <laughs> talk, it was a TED talk, and I, I shared it on my social media, and I really recommend you look her up. Um, but she talked about, like, birth. One of the biggest transformational experiences that any person can experience, and um, as somebody who's birthed two children, I can say, like, it changes everything. And I don't care how many times you're told that as a woman, it's like, oh, when you have this baby, it's going to change everything. You're like, yeah, right, I know that. You don't know it until you know it. It changes everything, right? And many women are enraged when they're giving birth. Um, you know, it's like, ah, you know, it's a powerful, powerful time. And, you know, in her talk, she talked about that, um, this is a quote from her. She said, you know, this is what I realized from giving birth. Joy is the gift of love. Grief is the price of love. And anger is the force that protects love. And when you are confronted with transformation, with pitta dosha, with birthing something new, what does the midwife say? Breathe and push. Right? Breathe. Air. Push. Get grounded. Transformation comes from the center. And sometimes to find that center, we have to sit with it. Doesn't mean we let it go. So, it might take time. It might take 15 years to call the man that killed your uncle. But there was transformation that happened there. She didn't let it go. She didn't. Forgiveness is not forgetfulness. But the relationships changed. The man asked for forgiveness. Her father said, you, you were forgiven because you're human. Because we... We allow all of these emotions into our house. So I, I think of this as, as hard work, hungry work, hungry for transformation. And we have to feed ourselves. You talked about having a sense of self-care but we also have to feel ourselves. And sometimes the trauma that we've experienced, um, whether we know it or not, or 